Also, something I wanted to add in there, before you do any of this stuff, make sure your truck is in mechanically proper working order and make sure you have your killer dowel pin fixed. If you don't have that fixed, I would recommend doing that before you do any of this other stuff. Anyways, let's get back to the video. Hey guys, so Cutter Up Rob here again. I am going to talk to you guys about the very first thing you should do mod wise to your 94 to 98 12 L's when you first get them. Now, when it comes down to it, it doesn't matter whether it's in, it doesn't matter what it's in, if it's been repowered, um, if it's still in the Dodge truck or whatever, um, you know, an on road application, I guess you would say, or something horsepower related, I guess. If you guys are wanting to be running this stuff, um, what I would recommend, the very first thing that I would do, if it was mine, cheapest thing to do, uh, that makes for your biggest bang for your buck, which I actually don't have any in stock at the moment of filming this, because I the set that I had, I had them sitting here on the bench and somebody just bought them. But I will put a picture up here um, govern springs. So three, four K govern springs. Now, so that you guys understand three, four K govern springs, the kit, you can do 3000 or 4,000, um, by changing the baby spring. Now I like myself the 4,000. Um, I always put 4,000 in everything. doesn't matter whether it's automatic or standard or any of that stuff. I always put 4,000 in it. Now, um, heed the warning, warning, when you do 4,000, you should, do valve springs. So these are just a 60 pound valve spring, or that's what the industry calls them. They're actually 165. Um, they're 60 pound over the stock valve springs. So I would recommend if you're going to do 4K, you can buy them in kits. Um, I'll put some links in the description if you want to uh, help the channel out um, with affiliate link. I will put a um, link in the description of a couple different ones that you can buy. Uh, ones that I've used in the past or there is super high quality ones. It just depends on how much money you want to spend um, And I realize a lot of guys when they're putting these things together to start with they don't have a bunch of money to spend So I would do govern springs um, If you're short on cash, you don't can do you, you can't afford to do the valve springs to start with Just put the 3k part in or you can do 4k Just be very careful that you don't wing it over 3,000 rpm um, because you can have issues. Some guys, yes, run them to 5,000 RPM without it, but you tend to wreck shit. So take it as a grain of salt. Believe me, believe the other person, whatever floats your boat. We rebuild engines, so I get to see broken stuff all the time. So that is the very first thing. Govern springs, govern springs, govern springs. If you don't do anything else, do a set of govern springs to the truck. It is an absolute different machine. Um, so going from that point, so if you've done now govern springs and you've now done, uh, the govern springs will cost you, let's say around a hundred to 150 bucks. Now the valve springs there again, they're going to cost you in around that. These are you in us dollars, give or take. Um, I'm just going off the top of my head. I would do valve springs. If you've never done valve springs before, it's not a hard thing. I do have videos in, uh, in my library for all of the stuff that we're talking about here. So if you want to, I will link them in the description. Um, just, it's gonna take me some time to get them all linked in the description because it's a bunch of work to link them in the description. And I try to get videos out to you guys as often as I can. So if they're not in the description, just bear with me. I will get them in the description. Um, next step. So if you've done your govern springs and you have done your valve springs, your next step on that point, um, I personally would be doing an exhaust and some sort of a better air filter setup. Now this is talking as long as the truck is in perfect working order. That's what I would do next. Um, so, you know, you can do all kinds of different ways. You can just do a big honking air filter, which is just a big filter that goes on your stock uh, intake, um, or you can do a cold air intake. I personally, if I'm doing a cold air intake, I do S and B myself. Um, completely up to you what you want to use. That would be my next step. Now, after that, you can go ahead and add a little bit more fuel to the system. Now, something that I would recommend doing, I have a, uh, I'll put a link in the description for it as well, is doing an overflow valve upgrade. Now, if your overflow valve has a bolt on the end of it, um, you can take that out and you can spread the spring out and 
bring yourself more fuel pressure or you can buy these from torque technologies uh, or torque tech yeah i'm pretty sure it's torque technologies but anyways you can buy these in adjustable if you really want an adjustable one or you can just do it this way completely up to you you want to get your fuel pressure as high as possible like 30 35 30 to 35 psi or plus is reasonable pressure no matter which pump you have the 160 170 horse pump you want more pressure the more the better um so that's the next step that i would do now after that now we're not talking about getting into turbochargers or any of that type of stuff this is we're talking on the cheap um you know to be able to do this stuff for with guys now the next step um if you've done all that stuff now you don't have to do an intake if you don't want to you don't have to do an exhaust it just helps the system flow better but i realize doing an intake doing an exhaust there again is not cheap but so we're trying to keep it on the cheap cheap side here but that's what i would recommend doing um, if you don't have the cash for that you can do this um, but just make sure that you, you know what's going on um, so your next modification in my eyes at that point is would be an egt gauge um, I personally, if you're going to have one thing, I would put an EGT gauge in. Boost really doesn't matter. Um, you know, and then the other temperatures, as far as like engine temperature, obviously you want to know. But if you know your EGTs, if you keep below a sustained 1250 degrees EGT, you won't burn the motor up. So when now before you start putting fuel at it. So if you're going to do that, get your EGT gauge. If you can't afford to do anything else, I would personally refrain from adding a bunch of fuel to it without an EGT gauge. But if you live on the wild side, then you can run to the next step. The next step is going to be um, adding more rack travel and removing the fuel plate. So basically what you're going to do is you need a kit like this, um, which just consists of, um, and I'll put a link in the description for the website when it's up on the website, well, up on my website. Um, it's just a different spring. There's a stock spring. And then this is the spring that, that I use. The bolts that come in the kit and then a washer. I do have a video on that as well um, for telling you, showing you how to modify that. So now that's gonna add a considerable, you know, like the most amount of fuel that you can add to the system without changing injectors, without changing delivery valves, that type of stuff. So you're gonna do your max travel kit um, and you remove your fuel plate. That is gonna give you, um, oh, the next step after that, you can do these either or, add timing, then add fuel or add fuel, then add timing. Now, so if you do this and you want more out of it, what I would recommend doing, um, now be forewarned, warning, that if you crank timing up too high, you usually blow a head gasket. Lots of guys will argue, blah, 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 don't care. You can blow a head gasket the more timing you run. If you stay between, let's say 17, 18 degrees, usually you won't blow a head gasket, but it is possible. So at the very least, if you've done all this stuff, I would have, if you're not going to do it yourself, um, or if you, if you don't have the tools for doing it, you can buy the tools. Um, they're not that expensive. I have videos on doing it. Buy the tools, do the timing, or have somebody do the timing. Um, if you want to live on the wild side, you can turn it up 20, 22 degrees, but I don't recommend towing there. If it's just a hot rod truck, yeah, you can do that, but it will be harder to start in wintertime. So if you are somewhere where it's cold, in the winter, heed my wording. Um, and then at that point, um, you've got as much fuel as you can get without changing hard parts, and you have the RPM to spin it. So as long as there isn't anything else with the truck, that is gonna be the most power you're gonna get with the truck. Now, most trucks, if you have a stock clutch or a stock tra automatic transmission, you're now making enough power to kill the clutch or kill the transmission. So that's where your next step is. But Talking about cheap and free, cheap and almost free mods, like, yeah, can you do it super cheap? Yeah, you can just pull a fuel plate out, not do any modifications, ram a bunch of fuel at it. Yes, you can do that. I personally don't like doing it that way, but to each his own. Subscribe, share, check out all the links down and below. Um, I appreciate you guys helping out with the channel. Um, and please share with a friend. And remember, it's not rocket science.